books, tapes, satellite broadcasts, and the Internet, the gospel work is fast accelerating around the world. The message of salvation has never had wider distribution than today. The Bible reveals that we are obviously living in Earth's final days. The increase in knowledge, global instability, moral decline, and the explosive interest in the occult all testify that the end is near. The final signs are fast being fulfilled, but there's more. The Bible also warns that it is these opposing forces of good and evil that will ultimately bring the world to the Battle of Armageddon. At some point soon, some unknown global crisis will plunge the entire planet into the most terrifying events the world has ever seen. For then there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. What catastrophe will trigger this final crisis? And when will it happen? Could it be some devastating act of terrorism? Some international economic crash? Maybe even an earthquake, asteroid, or some other cataclysmic event? Perhaps it's some chemical calamity or deadly biological plague. Maybe even a combination of these disasters. But while the Bible doesn't reveal the exact critical event, it does reveal the dramatic scenes that will follow. Coming up in our next section, you'll learn more about these astounding final events, shocking events, that even most Christians are unprepared to meet. As the Great Tribulation begins, world leaders struggle to deal with the mounting calamities. Meanwhile, those Christians who are true to God experience a wonderful surge of power from the Holy Spirit. After these things I saw another angel coming down from heaven, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. This great power that illuminates God's people is the Holy Spirit. With a holy boldness, they witness for God, pleading for the churches to reform and calling the lost to Christ. They stand firmly on the word of God and exhort all to repent of their sins and obey God's commandments. An atmosphere of revival moves across the world and the Holy Spirit compels ministers and church members alike to work earnestly for the salvation of souls. As the work of the Holy Spirit becomes more pronounced, Occult manifestations also intensify. Deceptive demons appear to many masquerading as loved ones who have passed away or as biblical saints of old. They speak words of peace and hope while presenting doctrines containing dangerous and subtle errors. Of them the Bible warns, For they are the spirits of devils working miracles. As you can imagine, these supernatural manifestations hold great influence with the people and few are willing to speak against them. Up to this point, families and churches have been ineffective in stemming the growing tide of global wickedness. In the midst of this political, moral and environmental upheaval, people desperately seek an effective way to stem the growing tide of universal immorality. Religious and political leaders urged by suffering constituents call for stronger legal measures to restore godly principles and peace to the land. As a result of this misguided pressure, the government passes laws that directly conflict with the law of God. But this is not the first time in history something like this has happened. You might recall the familiar story in Daniel chapter 3 when the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar commanded all in his realm to bow down and worship the enormous golden image he had forged. However, three young Hebrews knew this command was a direct contradiction to the second commandment regarding idolatry. Determined to remain true to God, they refused to bow down to the statue. The king was infuriated and ordered them cast into a fiery furnace, but God miraculously intervened and saved their lives. And then there's the story of Daniel in the lion's den. You'll recall the king of Persia issued a law that no one should worship any god but himself for 30 days. 
But Daniel knew that to obey this law would mean that he had to violate God's first commandment. So Daniel bravely continued his habit of daily praying openly to God, even though it put his life at risk. Daniel's enemies soon reported this violation to the king, who reluctantly had his trusted servant thrown into the lion's den. But once again, God's power was displayed as he miraculously spared Daniel's life. Likewise in the last days, Revelation predicts that an evil power will compel the governments of the world to enact laws regarding how people should worship God. These laws will outwardly appear to promote morality, but in reality, they prepare the world to embrace the mark of the beast and the Antichrist. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. During this time of mounting crisis, when the world is desperately seeking relief and looking for global stability, help appears in a most startling form. In various locations around the world, the shout is heard, Jesus has come, Jesus has returned. A radiant, charismatic being appears claiming to be the Son of God. An army of news agencies flock to see the supernatural entity perform miracles. They hear him repeat many of the same words Jesus spoke in the scriptures. This event is beamed to the world via satellite, and millions mistakenly believe that his appearance on television has fulfilled the scripture, every eye will see him. Many religions are anxiously expecting a coming savior, and this dazzling being seems to be the answer to their prayers. But the Bible is warned in 2 Corinthians that Satan can even transform himself into an angel of light. Sadly, it's not Jesus the people welcome with open arms, but Satan masquerading as the Son of God. By doing this, the devil is able to unite the people of the world and reinforce his counterfeit system of worship. And so, the devil perpetrates the greatest deception ever carried out on the human race. Satan's deceptions proved to be a powerful motivating force in the world. Most spiritual leaders accept the great imposter as well as the false system of worship he promotes. As global calamities intensify, church leaders believe no time can be lost in compelling the world to adhere to the doctrines of this counterfeit messiah. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Not everyone is deceived. A few realize the Bible has warned of this amazing deception, and they know the goal of this false messiah is to lead people away from the commandments of God. But this isn't the first time that Satan has appeared as an angel of light. When Christ was tempted in the wilderness, Satan appeared to him disguised as a glorious messenger of God. But the devil revealed his true identity when he tempted Jesus to disobey God's word. And so once again, using similar tactics, the devil tries to deceive the world into breaking God's law. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. The world is being brought to a time of decision. The false Christ and the global strife are polarizing the world into two distinct groups. Those who follow the Bible and those who follow the beast. Anxiety fills the hearts of people and religion is the supreme topic on everyone's mind. In TV and radio interviews and in court debates, God's true followers are brought before world leaders where they give powerful and eloquent biblical reasons for their opposition to the false system of worship being urged on the masses. The commandments of God and what